Welcome to the celebration of Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church's 75th anniversary. May we be drawn even closer as a family of God. The mission of our Emmanuel family is to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Jesus, our Savior, and until he returns to share our certainty of getting to heaven through him. The year was 1939 when a group of Christians from Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in Geneva, Ohio, in an effort not to proselyte, but gain members through unchurched by preaching the gospel of salvation through faith in Jesus, met and discovered 70 conservative Lutherans. They then investigated the possibility of a mission station in nearby Finlay. After an organizational meeting by representatives of 11 families in the home of Herman and Ruth Wilch, the district missions board was convinced that Finlay was a promising field to reach out to the lost. So in September 1939, a missionary call was extended to candidate of theology R.A. Ginsmer, thus becoming the first Wells pastor in Finlay, Ohio. He was ordained in a service at Trinity in Genera and installed on 22 October 1939. The following Sunday, 29 October 1939, the opening service was held with an altar and lectern made by members to give the interior a church appearance. The lease for the storefront was $30 per month for a year. There were 43 people in attendance at that first service. At the end of 1939, the congregation consisted of 39 souls, 30 communicants, and 11 voting members. 7 January 1940, the church's constitution took effect and it was voted to name the congregation Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. Charter voting members were Clarence Eris, Henry Eris, Homer Eris, Oliver Eris, Raymond Bladow, C. Eris, John Nitzke, Herman Wilch, and Marion Wilch. Pastor Ginsmer, using a rental property at 202 East Lima Street at $30 per month, as a parsonage, relocated to a rental property at 837 Park Street for $32.50 per month due to the sale of the Lima Street property. The fall of 1941 saw the congregation become incorporated as per the laws of the state of Ohio. The hope of the congregation to build a chapel brought about the purchasing of a lot on South Blanchard Street between Sandusky and East Main Street for the price of $450. The desire to begin building in 1941 was delayed by the architect and contractor until spring 1942. However, by that time, government building restrictions made it impossible to build. America was at war. In May 1942, Pastor Ginsmer accepted a call to Coloma, Michigan. He delivered his farewell sermon I commend you to God and the word of his grace on July 5th. By July 1942, the congregation had grown to 75 baptized members and 50 communicants. A call was extended as a candidate for the ministry Raymond Fry, a tutor from Northwestern Lutheran Academy in Mobridge, South Dakota. He was installed 26 July 1942 during that summer, a second-hand pump reed organ was purchased for $100 to beautify the worship services. Another attempt, and again in 1943, to begin building was again denied due to the wartime restrictions. The summer of 1943, after being denied a new chapel, saw the congregation refurbishing the rented facility. A pulpit, baptismal font, lectern, crucifix and new altar was donated by a congregation in Detroit and were used for many years. 29 October 1944, the congregation celebrated its fifth anniversary. In those first five years, there had been 29 baptisms, 11 confirmations, three marriages, and two burials. As of 31 December 1943, the congregation numbered 77 souls, 51 communicants, and 17 voting members. 
1945 saw the moving of the parsonage to 337 South Blanchard Street at a rent of $27.50 per month. Then in October, Pastor Fry accepted a call to St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Congregation in Saginaw County, Michigan. His farewell sermon was delivered on 11 November 1945. The next month, December, an offer was made to purchase the property owned by the Church of God on the corner of Quarry and West Front Streets. Unfortunately, Emmanuel was outbid. A divine call was extended to and accepted by Reverend Fred Schrader, who was installed 13 January 1946 by Reverend Martin. The code salary for missions by that time was $125 per month. With Reverend Schrader and his wife having three children, the rented parsonage proved too small, so the congregation purchased a house on Cherry Street for $6,800. In August 1947, the two lots purchased in 1942 were sold for $1,000 because the congregation was not satisfied with them. In November 1947, with the consent of the District Mission Board, two lots were purchased on North Main Street for the sum of $3,000. The congregation's desire to build immediately were once again disappointed. The proposed plans and specifications did not meet the Synod's guidelines. Pastor Schrader accepted a call to St. John's Congregation in Pigeon, Michigan in October 1949. He gave his farewell sermon in October 1949. The Emmanuel Congregation consisted of 156 souls, 101 communicants, 34 voting members, and 43 Sunday school students. In November 1949, Reverend A.R. Gallard accepted the call to Emmanuel and was installed by Reverend Voss on December the 4th. Since there was a great yearning for a chapel, the decision to build proceeded immediately. Plans were to erect the building at an estimated cost of $23,634.17. On 26 of February 1950, the lots on North Main Street were dedicated to the Triune God with Reverend Gallard and the chairman of the congregation spading the ground in groundbreaking ceremonies. Excavation for the building began 12 April 1950. The cornerstone was laid the 7th of May. As an interesting sidelight recognizing the need for something to fill the steeple, Park and Loretta Wolber were able to secure a bell used in their cherivary. It is rumored that the bell came from a former church in Kenton, Ohio. Bring the water in there.
believe this was past the press, if I'm not mistaken. But now you're still not coming around the corner, right? Construction proceeded at a rapid pace, completed at a final cost of $19,378.74. A balcony was added at later stages, and the congregation was able to dedicate its new chapel on 8 October 1950. Three services were held with a total of 873 worshipers on hand to celebrate the joyous occasion. Highlighted with music from a new Hammond organ, which had been donated by Mr. and Mrs. Harry Flater. With the completion of the new house of worship, a long-standing hope and prayer of the congregation was fulfilled. By March 1952, the communicant membership was at 101 and the manual declared itself to be self-supporting. In September 1953, Pastor Gallard accepted a call to St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Patterson, New Jersey and preached his farewell sermon on September 6th. Pastor Gallard was well liked and Emmanuel felt blessed to have him at this important time of transition. In February, 1954, Reverend W. E. Wagner accepted a call to Manuel and was installed on 21 March by Reverend Wilde. With the congregation indebted for both the church and the parsonage, huge efforts were made to wipe out the debt. The result was the making of the final payment on the parsonage in February 1955. The congregation continued to grow, and by the end of 1955, it consisted of 232 souls, 142 communicants, and 36 voting members. In March 1957, Reverend Wagner accepted a call to Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tucson, Arizona. He preached his farewell sermon on the 21st of April, 1957. We received a letter from Reverend Wagner and his wife, I'd like to read that to you at this point. Dear members of Emmanuel Lutheran, thank you so much for inviting me and my wife to celebrate your 75th anniversary on September the 14th. However, we must regretfully decline because of our age. I am 88 and my wife is 84. It would be impossible for us to travel by car that distance safely. Emmanuel Lutheran was the second congregation the Lord gave me the privilege to serve. Although the years I served Emmanuel were generally calm years with no major issues to contend with, yet there were some minor problems to deal with. In His grace and mercy, the Lord permitted them to be taken care of quietly. Many friends were gained for which we will be forever grateful. The Lord has blessed Emmanuel Lutheran with numerous faithful pastors as a result of those ministries, the Lord has blessed you with growth, relocation, and establishing a preschool. Most importantly, however, the Lord has kept you faithful to His Word in continuing to spread the gospel message to those floundering in unbelief and despair. Thanks be to our Lord for giving you His powerful message to individuals still in need of it. Members of Emmanuel Lutheran, even though we may not be in attendance at your celebration of giving thanks and praise to our God, Yet we will be with you in spirit, praying that the Lord of the church will continue to be and remain with you now and in the years ahead. To God alone be praise and thanksgiving. Sincerely, in his name, Reverend Werner and Dolores Wagner. Emmanuel's next pastor was the Reverend A. H. Mosky, who accepted the call in August 1957 and was installed September the 8th. 1959 was a turbulent year. Emmanuel, along with other Finley churches, opposed the introduction 
of Religious Education into the Finley Public School System by the Council for Weekday Religious Education. Pastor Mosky vigorously objected to such instruction, but his approach to the problem was not shared by all members. As a result, 14 families left to found another Lutheran church, this being of the Missouri Synod. 31 December 1960 saw a census of 182 souls, 98 communicants, and 36 voting members. In January 1961, Reverend Mosky accepted a call to Ascension Congregation, Detroit, Michigan. Emmanuel next called Reverend Kenneth Syme, and he was installed 10 September 1961. He was here a brief time, but many property improvements were made, such as interior and exterior painting. Contributions were generous, and the debt to the general fund was, in 1962, retired. May of 1963 saw Pastor Syme resign to serve in a foreign mission. He delivered his farewell sermon, 7th of July, 1963. A man was 25th anniversary brought the calling of Reverend Carlton Polinski, and he was installed September 15th. Emmanuel's count then stood at 185 souls, 103 communicants, 27 voting members, and 63 in Sunday school. Reverend Polinski stayed with the congregation until 1966. After having two pastors in just one decade and a large split, the congregation had to rely on help from the Senate to operate. It was then in May 1966 that they called the Reverend F.H.O. Junkins to lead them. He was installed on 17 July 1966. Before very long, the congregation was back on its feet as a self-supporting congregation. They observed their 30th anniversary with 178 souls, 125 communicants, and 30 voting members. Pastor Junkins was a second career pastor. He had spent some time in the Marines before being a Wells pastor. He remained with the congregation until he accepted a call to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Pastor K. A. Fulberge was installed October 1971. Pastor Fulberge asked to purchase his own home, resulting in the sale of the parsonage at 714 Cherry Street for $18,600 in September of 1972. The North Main Building receiving some upgrades in the 70s, such as air conditioning for the first time. They also celebrated the 35th anniversary with the burning of the mortgage. That same year, the parking lot was paved. A new organ was purchased in 1977 and dedicated on Thanksgiving Eve. The end of 1979 saw the membership at 138 baptized members, 112 communicants, and an average attendance of 66. In early 1982, Reverend Fulbriggy accepted the call to Elizabeth, Illinois. He served Emmanuel for 11 years. We'd like to welcome to the podium right now, Pastor Fulbriggy to speak to us.